Hey, this is Kevin, CEO of Pro to CEO, and today I want to talk to you on how to grow your career. And professionals who are super serious about making strides year after year or after a period of time you think is sufficient, that's really based on you. You declare that, you decide that. But at some point, if you're really a thriving professional, you really want to get somewhere in your career, you don't want to stagnate too long, you think about, how do I grow my career? I'm at a point where I feel pretty good about my skills, what I've learned. I have more to contribute, and I want to be able to do that so I don't get stuck. Plain and simple. So today is really about how do you grow your career? And... To me, I'm gonna let you in on a secret and it's really not a secret. It's certainly based on how you work, how you think, how you apply yourself. And the other thing is, and this is one thing that I learned and I picked up was, you know, how to see problems really as opportunities so you get that career elevation almost organically or it's built by you because you see something, you've seen something that you knew needed to change and you addressed it and you began to push in that direction and it opened up opportunities. So today really is how do you grow a career? And I'm talking from a couple standpoints. So think of it like this. You work for someone, you're working in an organization, whether it be for a government, whether it for an institution, education, you work for a corporate entity, a big one or a small one, this applies. Or you could think of it as this, you are working within an organization and you may wanna move from your department and you wanna go into another one because you wanna grow your career. So the first one's more like, hey, I'm in my role, I wanna move up in that role. The other one is, look, I'm in this, but maybe I see some opportunity over here. I want to go over there. The other is clearly, and the last one I'll talk to is really about how do I make a complete change and maybe change industries all together and become my own boss. So I'm talking about the career climbers, the people who want to do career crossovers in terms of changing maybe from one area to the next even working for someone or the complete crossover, as I would say in basketball is changing where you leave the entire thing and you go do your own thing, which is be your own CEO. And I can speak from experience because I've done all of those. Um, so I'm going to talk today really from this first, from the first standpoint. When I was first working, um, I thought about how do I get ahead? How do I get ahead? And I really began to think about what's missing. And I think that's the key. What's missing in your current job that you're working for someone and you see it, but not many other people see it. But if they do see it, they may not have the skill set or they may not want to make that effort. They may not have the time because they're overworked in their current job. But you, regardless of what's going on in your situation. You could be overworked, underpaid, et cetera, and you're tired of doing what you're doing. So you decide to take the initiative to go after something that possibly has been a problem for, has been a problem for your organization. And now you get to possibly put some energy towards it and solve it. <laughs> My first job, I remember working with athletes and there was this clear sense of when athletes were done, there wasn't a lot of direction they were given in terms of what could be next. And for me, that was a big problem area. I definitely didn't know everything I needed to know, but I knew good enough that, look, if I put some effort and start researching what happens when athletes aren't prepared, this is going to happen. They generally are not going to transition into a fruitful next opportunity as much as when they were playing and I wanted better endings for athletes. So I'm there I am 20, 24 in my career, perhaps first job. I'm recognizing that a lot of athletes who are leaving us really don't have a plan and very much needed one. So to me, I was like, look, I'm going to figure something out. I began to ask around, hey, don't do that. You don't have enough time. Learn your job. I said, okay, okay, I got it. And 
pretty much, I was put in my place and said, you know, until you really know what you need to know about this job, you really can't do extra. And that's one thing I want to caution you on. And I'm going to say this a lot when you uh, listen to my videos. First, get good at the job they hire you for. You really have to be committed to being a full professional in the skilled area they hired you for, particularly if you have um, jobs that require, you know, sufficient degrees and education, or you have to get certified and licensed. Once they spend that kind of money to hire you and you're in the job and then you've been picked and there's been this long search, or maybe it wasn't a long search, it just took a while to get to you. People expect for you to deliver on what you got hired to do. So make sure you do your job well first before you start sort of exploring into these other areas. With that, I got put in my place. I began to study what I needed to study on the job and didn't really look outside. It took me about a year later to say, you know what, <clears throat> I'm interested, maybe even a year and a half, um, I'm interested in exploring this because I really wanted this to solve this issue. And I began to think about how could I do this better? And what I found out was there was this program that was coming that the NCA offered and it was going to help athletes transition better. And I was like, whoa, how do I get into that? Well, unfortunately, there were enough schools who had applied and beat me to it because I had been sort of delayed for about that year or so. And there were no, there was no more room, but I called and I pressed and pressed and I said, Hey, I'm looking for a chance to get in. Can you, can you make one more spot? And because of the reputation of the school I work for, they provided one more spot spot. So the first 41 schools got in this program called the champs life skills program for student athletes to better help them transition into college, through college, and matriculate out of college. Man, I got in by the skin of my teeth, you hear me? And when I did that, I knew that was I was gonna be able to possibly solve something. Just the mere fact that by the grace, you know, got a, like, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was grace, it was favor, however you wanna call it. I got in, somebody on the other side felt my passion for this and they went back and they said something, whoever, and we got in. So there I am, one of the first 41 schools, and I get to travel and learn this program. <clears throat> and I got back and I learned all these things and I gave me these big booklets and binders that had all kinds of solutions to potential problems that we had been facing at my school. And man, it just put me on another stratosphere for uh, solving issues and problems. So that's why I go back to, you know, how do you grow your career when you're in a career and you're literally wanting to go up? That move moved my position title from athletic academic coordinator to that title and slash life skills coordinator. I had now gained a new title and it began to get me recognition throughout the department as this guy who brought this new program that was announced, you know, that we got in. So that was even a little bit more fanfare than I had anticipated. Now with that comes pressure. Now you got this title, you got to deliver on some things. And we were starting to really get busy on the athletic sense, meaning our programs were coming up. Football was doing well, basketball was doing well, baseball was doing well, track and field. So golf, you know, there were just lots of things that were happening. So now you're competing for time. You want to grow this new area, but now you got to negotiate. So for me, how do I grow my career? Um, I wanted, I had everything, but it was just very little space to grow in. But I did it by negotiating time with the coaches, negotiating time with my boss, going in to ask the AD and making these things a priority. So we focused on all these key areas and these key areas was so important to the athletic director that he mandated that every coach make some time. So for me, I was really, really fortunate that I got the chance to take something that I saw as a problem area. There was a missing piece to help athletes transition. And I was able to put it together enough to where we got recognized <clears throat> and we were able to get in that coveted group of 20 or 30 people 
and then got got recognized and got going. Excuse me. <coughs> Very natural here. It happens to everybody. He's talking and then it gets a dryness. And let me keep going. <clears throat> Moving from there, I was able to recognize that that move right there put my name out there nationally. I got invited to different conferences. I got um, different panels. I was able to get uh, even um, asked to consult and do projects with like big time companies like Nike. I couldn't believe it. I was like, man, here I am first as a counselor. Then I tried to solve this problem at my own school and they got recognized nationally. And now a big company like Nike is asking me to consult at a, at a program they had for a lot of years uh, back in the day called the Nike All-American Camp. So I was picked out of so many different, um, a small group of professionals uh, from all walks across the country. And we all focused in on helping Nike make better programs. So you see how, what I'm saying, not only did it grow my career inwardly, it grew my career um, externally in the industry while still working where I was working, my name got out and it, I began to get known as a life skills type of expert for student athletes. So that was pretty cool. And then from there, um, my career got uh, a pretty big boost because my name got said in another industry, which was in the um, professional uh, career um, recruiting um, industry. You hear about the recruiters for hiring talent. That was the next industry that I'm talking to you, those now who may want to change careers and want to do a career crossover. I certainly moved up and got some new responsibilities at that one job, but now I was getting recruited by another industry to come into a new industry. And that totally changed me, my career. So I did a career crossover, literally moved from my athletics industry all the way into the industry called HR recruiting, where I was a diversity headhunter. And I worked for a company called Inros. And I came right in, very good title. Um, all that work I had put in helped me change careers. And I got into this profession and there were two main roles. I was a corporate service manager and I was also a director of training and development. And man, I got stretched like no tomorrow in that position. It was really, really um, a big opportunity and it got me going. And I will tell you that it literally um, broke me too. So what we gotta do is be careful when you ask for these career changes too, that you go into a career and a opportunity that really does fit you. I went into this looking to change, but the change was so different than what I knew that it actually paralyzed me to some degree to try to close that learning gap that was so big. It wasn't even like this, it was like this. Cause now all of a sudden I had to sell and I had to work with very high specialized companies in science, technology, uh, banking, engineering, um, electronics and missiles, you know, aeronaut aeronautics, I mean, m missiles, space travel. I was working with NASA. Man, you're talking about going from working with student athletes to now working with all these corporate juggernaut companies. It was more than an ocean. And that's where you got to be really careful when you're looking to cross over careers. Are you prepared? So one of the things I would tell you is when you're going to look towards a new career and you want to solve a problem in the industry, make sure you're trained and prepared well enough to do that. At the time, I had probably about 50% of the skill sets that I needed in order to do that job excellent. The training part, the uh, development part with people I was all on, but the corporate services and making sure I was a good, great recruiter who could sell and could retain accounts. I was not prepared as I could have been for that. And it was challenging for me so much. So that I only stayed in that industry about two years. So guess what? I had good contacts. I got recruited back into the other industry and kept moving forward. Um, I got back into the industry of athletics. And once I got into athletics, 
that was a really, I got back into athletics. That really was where my career flourished. So I ended up uh, making a crossover back into the industry by, you know, good fortune and good contacts and relationships. I was welcomed back in. A lot when, uh, when a lot of people said, once you leave, you're not, never going to get back in. That's not true. That was, at least was my case. was not true. I was able to get back in. So from there, I was able to grow my career by getting back in. And then my career shot up. I came in as a, a director of life skills and facility manager. I ended up becoming the assistant director of student athlete sports services, director of the Clara Bell Smith Student Athlete and Academic Center and director of life skills and I'm spudsman for student athlete welfare and adjunct professor kinesiology uh, in the Department of Physical Education. Man, I'm telling you, I had like major growth in my career moving back into the industry I moved away from and I gained titles every year. And the last title most distinguished was a, a program of excellence award winner for the Division One athletic directors. And that gave my career a major, major boost. Um, and I can tell you how and why I did so well in that job was I once I got back in, I made a commitment to learn my job really well enough so I could really get the most out of it. So when I got to Michigan State, once I left the recruiting company and I was working for En-ROADS, um, I really want to make my mark. So I began to do everything I could to grow the life skills program, everything I could to become a great facility manager. And those things were like night and day, managing a almost $8 million building and becoming a director of life skills. It was like wearing two different worlds. So you had to worry about the janitor, you had to worry about broken things in a brand new multi-million dollar facility that was very close to state-of-the-art everything at the time. And then I was directing this life skills program that was never been there before. It was unlike the one at Florida State that had a little bit of foundation. Michigan State one had no foundation, uh, very little, I would say, at that. And then we were expected to grow it in careers, community, personal development, athlete development, and academic enhancement and leadership. So that was a big job in itself. and. On top of that, you know, I became an adjunct professor. I became an ombudsman, um, you know, director of life skills. It was just really, really, really good. As, um, somebody's outside my window there, sorry about that. But my interest was literally making sure that I made the most out of my career. So what am I telling you? You know, how you grow your career is you grow where you're planted and wherever you are, if you're growing, you're trying to grow your career, you got to commit to it. Um, my first job, I committed really well. My second job, I did not commit as well. And I recognized that because it wasn't a good fit. And I got out of it. My third job, I connected in and grew really well. And that took me um, to my next opportunity, which was I got recruited to go to the NBA. And when I got to the NBA, I started in a brand new position, just like the Michigan State, the Florida State one, I created a new position in life skills. The same thing with Michigan State, a new position in life skills and facility manager and ombudsman and, you know, director, uh, assistant director of the student athlete sports service program. And then, um, you know, adjunct professor, it was like all these things were just rolled up in that job because I committed to it and really tried to solve some major problems that I thought were going to be very helpful for us as a comp as a institution to solve. And then I believe just my experience allowed me to be competitive for the NBA to give me a call and said, hey, we're starting this new um, development league. We want you to come in and work it. And, you know, from there, it just kept growing my career in the NBA. Um, it just really was something that I stuck to and learned a formula on how to grow um, my career by going from college to nonprofit back to college and now to the pros in terms of sports. Um, phenomenal opportunity. So what am I telling you? It can be done. You know, if someone tells you that um, you can't possibly break into that industry and if you leave that industry, you can't possibly get back into that industry, that is not the case. 
in my opinion. If you have good enough contacts, you do good enough work, um, and you have a good reputation, um, there will always be room for you if you do that kind of job. Now, you may not be perfect in every role that you do. You may not be 100% on every single day. There may be a period of your career where you feel stuck and you may not get going. And you may spend a lot of time working with people for years, years and whatever. And then, you know, they get promoted and you don't. Sometimes that happens, yes. But if you eventually are doing great work, your time will come or you may move on from that situation or move on from those people to free you up to help you to get you to the opportunity that you want to want to be in. I can tell you when I got to the NBA and started working with the G League, <clears throat> they put me in a role that hadn't been there before. I was director of community relations. That's now called social responsibility these days and or corporate social responsibility or social impact or social enterprise, etc. however you want to call it. But that was a new emerging field. And at the time, Everybody's like, oh, you're going to be community relations and you're going to leave this big job at Mi at Michigan State. I was like, look, there is a new opportunity here to grow my career. Um, I'm solving a problem for the NBA um, to help them grow a business. And I'm not going to possibly get that opportunity over and over. So I grew and decided to try to grow my career in a way that would allow me to move up and so I started in a minor league. Yeah, the first official minor league for the NBA, to me that wasn't a bad deal at all. I was like, look, I'm getting to be one of the founding administrators or executives to start this league. That'll never get taken away from me. I can truly say I was there when we first started and did a lot of years to help that business get going. And I had to make a lot of sacrifices along the way to make sure that business um, was successful. So for me, it was extremely, extremely critical that I get in and learn the ebb and flow of that job. I had to travel. I had to figure out different working styles of different people that work in different types of markets. Some markets were very small, some were a little bit larger. You go from working in uh, the south to working in the southwest to working all the way out west to working in the midwest and the upper upper north uh and then to the northeast you're talking about trying to figure out how to make sure you stay uh, really really professional and stay on um stay alert to all the different challenges that are in each market because it was always different in each market so I was really always trying to be as very charismatic, try to listen, try to take detailed um, um, information in, as well as call people back and give people great uh, feedback or let them know I took the information back and this is what we're gonna do to try to help you solve your problem in your market. Like really the attention to detail for me was really, really critical. And, you know, being someone that I felt like people could get along with and relate to me, I was able to get a lot out of the people who worked with me to help grow community relations um, for the G League, so much so that um, at some point during that first two years, it still was a little um, tumultuous as a business. So they asked me to make that move to grow my career in a whole nother direction was to kind of get back to what I was doing in college, which was working with players. I was like, wow, this would be even um, cool to get now to work for the NBA and work on the player development side. So here I am, you know, got hired for this particular position within the NBA and in their minor league. And then I get a chance to now switch over to the official NBA side and work on player development. Man, that was like, um, a major, major opportunity that I could not, you know, say no to. And I ended up working on the NBA side and start working with, still working with the minor league teams, but also got assigned some NBA teams. And that was really cool. And I started working the NBA draft and did that for almost 10 years or so. It's just a lot of cool things that were able to happen. And then as the NBA development league business still wasn't where it needed to be, they asked me to go back on the other side and grow my career even more. So I moved from being a community relations person to now a player development 
person and now move back to the D League and become an NBA community relations and player development, like both roles now on the on the NBA development league side. So I'm totally growing my career. One position and then sort of two roles over here in player development and then moved back over to development league and officially had to move from New York and move to South Carolina and do that role in South Carolina. Like, man, there was so much going on. I can tell you that I knew my career was going, growing, but I was being stretched beyond compared. My family was being stretched because they moved with me in every um, move I made from, from, um, from Florida to Michigan um, to New York to South Carolina. And then in South Carolina, we did a good enough job and really grew the business in different parts of the country where they were like, hey, we want you to come back and now grow the business solid in New York. So moved from then New York, from South Carolina back to New York. So you're talking about Florida to Michigan to New York to South Carolina back to New York. Man, I was like growing my career like crazy. Um, and this probably was somewhere like year um, nine or 10, uh, somewhere in that, um, range. So it was just literally, you know, thing after thing, um, was happening. And I was really, you know, not totally upset, but all the moves were, were challenging, you know, personally for me and my family at the time, um, that we just, every move we had to accept, you know, there were going to be ups and down periods when you make moves. And you just got to remember that not every move is going to be super smooth. Some are going to be better than others, but I, you know, I was literally growing my career and every step of the word. And I moved from that G League in South Carolina back to New York and I got promoted uh, to vice president um, of social responsibility and player programs for the NBA and NBA development league. I was definitely um, very humbled to be the first person to ever do that um, in the history of the NBA. So I'm telling you, you're talking to someone who has climbed the college ranks and then climbed uh, and went into the nonprofit space and then didn't necessarily have a good fit. So I went back into the college space and climbed again. And then from there did some crossover stuff within my career. And then that got me um, to the pro level and I did some more crossover and my career crossed over from minor league to in major league to minor league to major league. And then finally, you know, got to the vice president C level and the senior management within my department and was really just, you know, very, very pleased over the 14 seasons I worked, um, almost 14 seasons I worked for the NBA. I just was really, really couldn't ask for, um, when, it, when I look back at it all, couldn't ask for a better experience. I didn't think I could go any further until I made the ultimate career crossover and started my own company called ProtoCEO, which is a career transition and business development strategy firm for individuals, teams, institutions, organizations. We work from some of the best um, large institutions in the country, um, colleges to individuals who are making a transition with their own career and they're going back, um, moving from one industry to the next. You know, check us out, we're on the web, but what can I tell you is you can make those moves and work for somebody and you can grow your career. And then eventually within that, there may come a day where you wanna grow your career in a new way, which is in the entrepreneurial space. So I made the ultimate move to the CEO space <clears throat> in which I operate. And I can tell you, it's been very fulfilling, very rewarding, and I can't um, complain. Not something that I would would change. It would take something major for me to to, to change off of what I'm doing these days. But I will tell you that um, every step I did was a learning one. I'll be able to fill you in more in the future. And I hope um, today's video really can get you to understand that you can make a lot of moves in your career and really how you grow your career is really getting good at understanding what it is that your job is at first. Always do your job first. Always do what they hire you to do first. And then as you grow your career, be looking for opportunities to grow 
your company and grow yourself at the same time. Always remember when you're working for something, it's about working and growing the company. No one's bigger than the organization. But also remember within there, there should be room for you to grow and develop your skill set and develop new talents and dis discover new opportunities for yourself and for the, for the company. So please keep that in mind. Uh, check out uh, my other videos. And um, if I can be helpful, certainly you know how to reach out to protoceo.com where you can contact us. Thanks again for watching. Continue to sort of develop and grow yourself and hopefully you get the most out of your career. This video is for those uh, who wanted to know how to grow your career. Uh, hopefully you continue to prosper in whatever you are doing and look forward um, to the next video. Take care and be well.